What's going on guys, Andrew Pilikaki here and I am back with another video and sorry if I look a little tired, I woke up pretty early to make a YouTube video for you guys and as you can see by the title, it's going to be a January 19th NHL rumor update. Now if you're watching this on the 19th, cool, you get the most up to date rumors and if you're watching this on another day, um, maybe some of these trades have already happened, maybe some of these rumors have changed, you can always compare it with this video and see what happens. But uh, make sure you go and check out Spectres Hockey. The link will be down below. That is where I get all my rumors. This isn't a, a paid promotion type of thing. This is just the website that I go to every single time to look up about rumors. And Spectres Hockey was nice enough to allow me to make a video on the headlines that are on the list that's on my phone. So we're going to get into some rumors. Now, uh, if you guys have been on my channel before, First of all, thank you very much. And secondly, uh, we've been updating some rumors as the videos have gone on, and, and it's kind of fun. So we'll see in this new report if there's any new rumors um, or if we're going to be updating the rumors that we've been talking about before. So uh, the first rumor that I read about this morning was Corey Crawford. Now, we all know that Crawford has been fantastic over his career for the Chicago Blackhawks, but this season... Uh, it's looking like he may be done for the season. Now, it's not official, but uh, he has vertigo-like symptoms, and it's taking him out of the lineup for some time. And the Chicago Blackhawks are a little worried about having a starting goaltender or at least having uh, a goalie tandem that will be good enough to be in the NHL. So they, they might be looking at making a move here. Now, from the list that I have here... They're, they're not sure if they're going to get a goaltender, maybe a defenseman, or just stay um, where they are because they feel like they have a good enough team where they could really make a push and goaltending may not be the biggest thing that they need to address. So there's some options here um, like Robin Lehner, P Peter Morazic. Uh, Halak, Anti Ranta. So those are some names that have been tossed around. Teams that aren't really, you know, making a playoff push currently, uh, except for maybe the Islanders. But they're saying that the goalie market may not be uh, where they want to go. They could be looking at acquiring a top four D man, but that would really make Chicago take a hit towards their younger crop, which Chicago hasn't been afraid to do before. They've made a couple moves, some good ones, uh, a couple risky ones, but. I'm not sure they're going to want to do that. So some of the names that they're looking at for the blue line would be like uh, Jacob Truba, which isn't going to happen because the Jets are on their way to being a, a fantastic team this season. They already are, but like they're trying to take the next step. Um, Mike Green, Ian Cole, uh, those two names are a little bit more realistic, although Pittsburgh may want to hold on to him because Pittsburgh's had some uh, injury issues as well. Uh, and Ian Cole was a guy that we all thought was going to be traded within days, about, what, a month ago or something like that, and he's still there. So these rumors, you never know what could happen. Uh, Mike Green seems like the most uh, reasonable one, but you're going to have to give up quite a bit for him because he's considered to be the best defenseman on the market. So I'm not sure that's going to happen. Um... I don't know. There's some other options here. Uh, Sportsnet apparently is saying uh, Robin Lehner, Anti Ranta, Mrazek, Howard also in there, or uh, Calvin Pickard or Garrett Sparks. As a Leaf fan, not sure about Sparks. Pickard could be an option. But the, the Hawks have a current uh, goaltending tandem of Forsberg and Glass, so we're going to have to see if they want to hold on to that tandem. Uh, they're both... Uh, well, Glass has had a very, you know, long path to the NHL, and I believe Forsberg's still pretty young, so I'm not sure if they're going to want to hold on to that uh, tandem. So, uh, the next rumor is Evander Kane. Now, we, if you've been a part of this channel, we've talked about Evander Kane before on multiple occasions. Uh, apparently, Evander Kane was open to an extension with the Buffalo Sabres, but the Sabres have not approached him yet. Apparently, he doesn't mind signing with Buffalo, depending on the, the years and the term, whatever. Um, that's... I mean, that's a little bit of a surprise, but at this point, it looks like Buffalo is just, you know what, we're going to deal you. But if you're a team that's looking at Evander Kane, his price has gone up, apparently, to four assets. So, um, since Buffalo doesn't want to re-sign it because they have a lot of money tied into, like, seven players here, it says $43 million tied into Eichel, O'Reilly, Alpozo, Palmenville, Rastelainen, Bogosian, and Scandella, um... They're saying Kane could, you know, get probably in the 7 million range next season because of his production on pace for, what, like 30 goals or something like that. So uh, it looks like Buffalo's not willing to make that move because they don't want to sign him and be tied up with cap. So uh, apparently this is what Buffalo is looking for, a first-round pick. Um, they're also looking for uh, probably a 
player that's ready to play in the NHL now. Uh, they're looking for a prospect um, and possibly another one of each. Uh, not one of each, but like another pick or another roster player or another prospect. And they're willing to eat uh, some of his salary, apparently, to up the offer. Um, so I'm not sure how much of his salary, like what he's getting paid this year. I haven't really looked into it, but uh, it looks like they're really trying to get a huge return for Kane so that way they don't have to make a ton of other moves. Well, I do see the uh, teams may be interested in giving up some picks or maybe a prospect for Evander Kane. I'm not sure if four assets is going to get it done. I think that Buffalo is maybe looking for a little bit too much. That could just be me. Uh, apparently, Pittsburgh, St. Louis, New Jersey, Los Angeles, Nashville, and New York, the New York Islanders are options for uh, Evander Kane to be traded to. Well, while I can see this deal happening again, there's a lot of assets. Pittsburgh makes sense to me. Maybe St. Louis, depending on if they're going to make a deal for Hoffman. Uh, just this could be one of the bigger moves that happens because Evander Kane can score, and he's proven this year that he's been pretty good. Um, you know, they're they're looking for they're looking for a lot. Four assets is uh, quite a bit. Um, so Spectre put on here as a Spectre's note, which is a very cool thing on here. Um, he's saying uh, the asking price is high, but how could you blame them? Uh, he's saying he also doubts they'll get four assets. Um, he's thinking they're going to get a first round pick, uh, maybe a second rounder and a prospect or a young player, which I can 100% agree with. And um, I I'm thinking that that may be the best option. And the next one that we're going to get into is the Ottawa Senators. Now, again, we've talked about the Senators and where they might be at getting rid of some players, maybe doing a bit of a fire sale. Not sure that's going to happen. So apparently uh, Mike Hoffman, Zach Smith, and uh, Pajot are getting a lot of attention from teams. And that that's not a surprise. Uh, all three of those guys can be an upgrade for your team. Smith, maybe not as much, but Pajot and Hoffman for sure. Um, so definitely... Uh, I could see if Hoffman gets dealt, this could be one of the bigger moves because I think he has an A-plus elite type of shot. Uh, Pajot has been pretty good at times, and Smith has been pretty good at times. You have to give him that. So uh, it looks like they may be uh, looking to shed some salary here, uh, maybe put to, uh, more money towards Carlson and prove to Carlson uh, that they're going to make a move in the next couple of years to become a better team. Uh, it's believed that there's teams interested in Dion Phaneuf as well, but he does have quite a big uh, no-trade clause. He only has a 12-team list that he would be traded to, I believe. Um, so there is teams that are interested in him, but uh, it looks like they'll, they would have to eat a lot of his cap because he's getting paid like $7 million a year. Uh, as a Leaf fan, I know that's a large amount, but hey, Phaneuf got his money and he's doing well. So uh, doing well in the money category. I haven't watched a ton of games. I'm not sure how he's doing as a player, but I think he's doing all right from what I've seen at least. Um, so back to Carlson. Uh, it looks like Ottawa is trying to make a push at re-signing Carlson this offseason. Uh, he's a guy that I can't see getting traded, especially right now, unless something huge happens. Um, obviously, you have to listen to offers, and that's what Ottawa has been saying. There's reports saying that they are listening. But it has to be like an out-of-this-world crazy offer for Carlson because he is arguably the best defenseman in the league. Uh, his offensive side is just crazy. Defensive side, not so much. But, again, he gets the job done and he's a great player. So uh, if he gets traded now, I'd be, pigs are flying. I mean, I'd be really surprised. The off season, if it looks like the contract negotiations are going very south, it's not looking good, then maybe there's a possibility that Carlson gets moved. But uh, I can't see it happening anytime soon. And it looks like Ottawa is going to try to uh, get some money uh, for uh Carlson by shedding cap and maybe proving to him by going out and getting somebody else that they're they're ready to take another step. They just wanted to switch it up this year because they're not doing so well. Um, apparently, people are like the one quote that's here says even Wayne Gretzky was traded, but. I mean, I wouldn't compare the two, but it is of that magnitude, I guess, because you wouldn't expect him to get traded out of nowhere like a franchise type of player. Um, I'm guessing that uh, Ottawa doesn't want to move him. They would love to keep him for life, and I'm pretty sure that was one of the quotes. They'd love to keep him as a cent for life. And quickly going to the New York Rangers, real quick here to end the video, last rumor of the video. Uh, thanks again to Spectres Hockey. But um, 
Apparently, because of the Evander Kane thing about getting four assets, the Rangers think that they should get more for Rick Nash. Um, I 100% disagree. Um, earlier in Rick Nash's career, sure, uh, he's only on pace this year for what? Uh, 23 goals and 41 points, while Kane is on pace for 30 and 63 points, or 65 points. So, uh, definitely Kane is probably going to have more productive years, and that's what Spectre's, uh, the Spectre's note says here. Nash is not going to get you four assets. Uh, you, you may, you may get something good for Nash, but I don't think that you're going to get what Kane is probably going to get, uh, because he's not even going to get four assets so um rick nash not gonna get what the rangers think he's gonna fetch but anyways that is the rumor update if you're new make sure you subscribe love to have more hockey conversations with you uh, specters hockey uh, is down below if you want to look up some more rumors you want to see some articles lots of great stuff on there lots of great discussions make sure you go down there click the link read it go follow him on twitter um, his all his information is is in that website as well. I'll try to link as much as I can. But yeah, thank you guys for watching. If you're new, make sure you subscribe. Uh, we'll see you guys in the next video or stream. Peace.